All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know we don't have everybody here yet, but we're in to try to keep in time. We're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm showing up here is um, some helpful links. Um, can I have, does everybody know how to raise their hand in Zoom? See if I get any hands at all. How many people, all right, Lydia knows how to raise her hand. <laughs> how many people have been into um, Vita before? Raise your hand. Okay, hands down. I know you're probably still trying to figure that out. How many of you um, are brand new to the system? This is your first reporting year in 2019. Okay, so we got a few new people too. Okay, you can go ahead and put your hands down or um, clear your nose. <laughs> All right, so the first thing is, um, my name is Debbie Lewis. I'm from the Learning and Organizational Development uh, Unit. And we also have on the call today, Danae Wolf is helping me out as, uh, well, she set me up the, the meeting. I'm the co-host, she's the host, um, but she's gonna help me out. So if you guys have any technical difficulties with Zoom, please uh, go ahead and send her a message. If you're gonna send a chat um, to people, make sure you send it to everyone in the room. Um, that way uh, everybody can learn from each other's questions. We also have Brian Butler on the call. He is um, with Learning and Organizational Development Unit as well. Um, he works a lot with FCS folks because he's 60% FCS um, program evaluation director, 60%. Uh, and 40% with LOD. So the LOD website has gotten an overhaul recently. So if you haven't been there recently, go ahead and take a look. It's extension.osu.edu forward slash LOD. So I'm just going to start off by sharing some helpful links with you. Um, the uh, Vita uh, URL is vita.osu.edu. If you want to email and ask for technical assistance with Vita, the email address is vita at osu.edu. We have an um, OSU extension help webpage on the LOD website, uh, and you can get to that using a Go link, uh, which is OSU e Vita help. Uh, Go links are no longer case sensitive, so you can get to them, uh, whether you use the CAPS or not. Writing goals. Um, I did have some questions about goals. This uh, URL will point you to the operations website where they have a um, listing of what's the difference between a professional development goal versus a performance goal, and then what the expectations are for how many goals that you need to write um, of each kind per year. And I will talk about goals. And then if you did not make it to the roadshows, we do have a new um, REG data collection form and REG is race, ethnicity, and gender which we're supposed to be collecting from our program participants, uh, which is located at go.osu.edu forward slash AAEEO. Um, and there are now directions uh, as a page one of that form, and it's an individualized form, so you can hand it out a single page to each of your participants and then collect it when the program is completed. Um, if you are collecting that data in some other format, like you're using a registration form uh, for your program, or you already know the participants because they are past program participants of yours, and you already have collected that reg data information, or you're using 4-H online, for example, um, if you already have that data, then you don't need to use this. This is just if you have no other means of collecting that data already. And feel free to come in, um, ask questions um, as we move along here. If you see something that's uh, confusing to you, I believe you can unmute yourself or you can also, um, I'm keeping an eye on the chat window over here and Danae will as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the structure of this system. It is a reporting system that was created for the entire university. Uh, it's kind of like an egg because the elements portion or the yolk is what was purchased from as, as a completed product from a company. Um, this is where you can do searches for your publications. If you have any funding, um, including grants, contracts, fees, 
uh, that's where you're going to put that information. Also publications, any service or awards. Those will all go into the elements section. Um, there are some uh, small teaching things that you will also put into elements um, for teaching extension and continuing education instruction. Um, and I will get into that a little bit as well. Uh, this is where you can also update your personal profile. Now the outer wrapper was developed, um, and that's what we're calling the actual VITA system, was developed by the Office of Distance Education and E-Learning. Uh, we have our extension module located within the VITA wrapper. Um, this is also where you're going to input supporting data for any publications that you enter into the system. You need to fill out the supporting data section, um, which you will find in VITA. Uh, narratives are only for faculty members and faculty members who are interested or in the process of going for promotion and or tenure. So if you are a P, um, you do not need to worry about the narrative section that you find in the gray menu bar in Vita, and I will show you that. This is also where you can generate reports, um, including the extension in a report, but you can also generate a dossier document from the Vita wrapper. So what those report systems are doing, um, they're going into both the elements section and the beta section um, for the extension module, pulling your data and then populating um, the appropriate report. So if you are brand new to the system, um, well, everybody needs to sign in when they get into VITA, so vita.osu.edu, and then the first thing you're gonna do is click on the sign in button up in the upper right hand corner. You will need to use your last name dot number and Kerberos password, uh, which is the same thing you use for your e -boost. If this is your very first time going into VITA, click on this Curate Elements Data. If you do not see this part where it says Elements Data, over on the left-hand gray menu bar here, um, then that means that you have not clicked on that Cur Curate Elements Data button. So you're going to do, uh, click there first, and it's going to start an overnight automated process to create your elements account, all right? And then if um, you uh, do not have this department um, item in the menu bar, uh, then you email vita at osu.edu with the subject line, please add to extension in vita. Now, if you have been around for a couple years uh, and you used VITA last year for your reporting and you find now that this department tab is missing, please um, email VITA at osu.edu and let them know that you're not new. You should have programs listed in there. I've had at least one person that was supposed to be here on the call this morning um, that had a problem where they uh, entered into the system and they had the department tab, but um, once they got into the extension module, there were no programs listed, even though she should have 2018 or 2019 programs listed already. So if you have that problem, that is a technical issue, and you need to email vita at osu.edu. You can copy me on those emails. Uh, that way I know what's going on and that there is a glitch in the system. Um, and occasionally that department tab might disappear, but don't be, wor don't be worried, your data hasn't disappeared. It's just um, occasionally people get kicked out of the system for some reason, I'm not sure why exactly. They're not sure why. Uh, so this item, uh, this gray bar up here, this is the navigation menu within the VITA system. So we'll be talking about most of these um, sections, uh, elements data, supporting data, and the, the main part of our uh, discussion here today is going to be spent in the department extension section. Okay, so in elements, um, there are, you have a profile set up in elements. So there are things that you put in here, including academic appointments and extension educator program assistant. Those are all considered academic appointments. Um, any non-academic appointments you might have, um, education and degrees and certifications can go in here. If you speak a language and you put a, a language in here, make sure you actually speak it because you, we haven't found a way to delete it after you have entered it into the system. That's a little bug. <laughs> um, and maybe that's the way the elements uh, programmers designed it. 
Um, but if you speak um, Swahili, you better, if you enter it into the system, make sure you speak that language uh, because otherwise it will, you will, you won't be able to take it back out. This is also where you can manage your mailing address and web URL. This is also where you can um, look at the items that you have into the system um, and edit your uh, preferred personal information for your addresses. Also in elements, we have account settings. This is where you can manage delegates. So if your supervisor has asked you to add them as a delegate, um, then this is where you're gonna to fix that. You also need to do it in the Vita section and I can show you where to do that. Uh, publications, search settings. If you have multiple author names, for example, I'm out there in the universe as Lewis, Deborah K, but I'm also out there as Lewis, DK. Uh, so any variance you might have in your author name, you can add into this, sec this section of the system. So where's all our extension stuff? In RIV, um, it used to be in a non-dossier section, but now we have our own section here called Department Extension. The types of things that you're gonna put into here, um, your extension programs, this is your large P program. Uh, so what is it, the holistic um, kind of curriculum you're delivering in your, your um, county? Um, the types of data, the fields that you're gonna fill out here are listed on the screen. Uh, we will probably go into more detail once we uh, get into the system, but just remember that in the extension program field and form, you're gonna be filling out a lot of qualitative information. You're describing that, that year long uh, teaching effort. For example, I was in the county before. Um, I was a 4-H um, agent up in Murray County. We had two 4-H agents in our county at the time. Um, so I had uh, about nine large P programs and capital P. Uh, so this is my, my bigger programs. So for example, underneath my CloverBud programs, because I was in charge of the CloverBud program, I would put events, um, for example, my CloverBud volunteer training, which was slightly different than our older youth um, volunteer training. Um, and also anything I had to do with my CloverBud day camp, I would put as an event underneath my CloverBud program. Um, any training that I did with my, uh, my camp counselors for CloverBud day camp, I put in there as well. So any of the events that I did during the year that um, helped to support that overarching CloverBud program, I would put as events supporting my CloverBud program. Um, I also was in charge of our youth uh, government day. So that was our junior leadership program. So I had like teen adolescent development or teen leadership development. Um, so all of the mock up, um, the mock trials that we did or the mock elections that we held, uh, the quiz bowls that I did with them on uh, trying to teach them what they were, uh, <laughs> what they needed to know about the person that they were going to, the county official they were going to shadow for the day. We had a banquet associated with that. So those were all events in support of my teen leadership development program. So those are just a couple of examples. My, one of my uh, most frequently asked questions is what the heck is days planned and days spent? So days planned and days spent, um, the days planned would be how many days do you plan to spend on this program in the upcoming year? So we're reporting on 2019 programs right now. So how many days do you plan to spend on this particular program in 2020? Um, so if you are going to continue with the program, you might have um, more days if you're uh, gonna make a concerted effort to kind of market the program. Uh, more um, and or if you've lost funding for a program or something like that you might have zero days planned and then days spent is how many days did you spend on the program in the current reporting year which for example today is 2019 um, and when we're talking about days planned and days spent we have uh, about 251 days in the year once we take out all our weekends and our um, our holidays and I know we all work on weekends and holidays and extension. <laughs> it just happens. 
um, but technically we have 251 days that we're paid for. Uh, and then 60% of that time should be supporting these programs, whether it's developing the program, delivering the program, evaluating the program. Um, that's what days planned and days spent are. And we're asking you to make the professional um, judgment on how many eight hour work days you spent on that during the year. Um, so if, um, and we, we also know that we don't spend eight hours doing anything in a row because there's constant interruptions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so back to my other example, my Clovervide program, um, I would spend um, probably on my major programs, I had like 20 to 25 days that I would spend on those. And then my programs that I um, were more developed and kind of had a volunteer support uh, kind of helping me uh, manage those programs, um, those were probably 12 to 15 days. Overall, across all of your programs um, that you have in the system, and I'm talking large P programs, not the events sort, uh, supporting them, the large P programs, you should have no more than 140 to 160 days total. So don't put 160 days in one of your programs um, and then come in to the next program and put another 160 days and the next program put 100 days um, because you've added up to more than 365 days a year, even though we feel like we work that much anyway. <laughs> uh, so other items in here we'll, we'll talk about when we get into the actual form, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that days planned and days spent. These first ones up here are drop downs, by the way, the title of the year. Uh, well, a lot of these are drop downs, the plan of action, program area, impact area, um, which is now labeled as priority area and statewide team. Those are all drop downs. So next we have the extension events. And again, these are events associated with the program. So they're supporting the programs. This is where you're gonna put a lot of your quantitative information. This is where you'll see your direct contacts. In other words, your reg data um, that we're collecting. Um, also, you can put a title of an event um, in here and it can be different than the program title. This is where you're gonna indicate whether you taught. So if you got up in front of a group of people um, and you taught a subject, um, then you answer the question, did you teach? You just say yes. If you didn't teach, you say no. And you can put either type of event into the system. So if I'm doing the organization of event, like uh, for example, uh, youth quality or uh, animal quality assurance. If I am the one, um, the educator in the county organizing everything, but I don't actually, um, like uh, teach anything there, I can still put that event into um, in support of my program. Um, I just will answer no to the, the question, did you teach? Um, I realize that we, some of us do organize those types of things and we actually teach as well. And you can do that as well. Um, let's see, um, if you are part-time, Yes, you would still use eight hours, but what you would do is in your formula when you're trying to figure out, Sarah, what your um, days planned and days spent are, um, just whatever your FTE is. So if you're only a 50% time person, then you're going to be reporting on 80, 80 days during a calendar year. Does that make sense? You still are calculating on eight hour days, though. That's why it says days planned, days spent. Um, let's see, where was I? Okay, um, so some of these are drop downs and check checklists um, in here. Um, you can only associate one date with an event. So if you're doing a multi-day camp, for example, that you're trying to add as an event, don't enter each separate day as an event, just enter the one and then pick either the first day of camp or the last day of camp as your date for the camp because we can only have one day that goes into the, um, the table for this particular item. Little talk about reach versus reality. So our reg data, which is what we're collecting our demographics on, um, we're trying to compare that to the community demographics. Um, so we do have a nice um, video on the LOD website that talks about um, how to use, uh, for example, I think the one we posted up there is how to use uh, the US Census data. There is a nice um, place where you can 
go and search data specifically on your county and break it down um, by several different methods. Uh, Brian and Danae did a great job putting a video up there that kind of helps to explain that. So if you'd like to visit that, it's go.osu.edu forward slash LOD data. Danae, I think that's the one that points directly to the video. Is that correct? I, I can't, can't remember. I will check on that and get back to you. Okay. All right. Because we have another one that points to our, um, our uh, assessment section of the LOD website, but then one that points specifically to this video that I was just talking about. So when we talk about, when we um, hear about the REG data, we're, we're trying to make sure that the people that are coming to our programs reflect the actual de county demographics of the people. So I'm getting a question from Cheryl. Um, it is a commonly asked question, I think. <laughs> um, so for committee work, um, you probably will have, um, and I did have when I was a 4-H agent in a county, um, I had um, like, uh, I had a volunteer management um, program and that's where I put my, like my county, um, uh, my, my various uh, committee meetings, et cetera, like that. Um, so I had a specific program for volunteer management. Um, and again, if you are not teaching at one of those meetings, then you just say no, you, you aren't. Uh, when you add the event, you said no, you did not teach. And then you could um, come back at the end of the year um, and describe in the extension uh, program that you put um, that that committee meeting was supporting. Um, you're going to add in your qualitative and narrative statements uh, for how all of the events that you have associated with that program supported it. Okay, so extension goals. Again, this uh, go link down at the bottom will point you directly to um, the operations website that has information about goals. There's two types. We have performance goals and we have professional development goals. When you're adding them into the system, you uh, can select a year or type in a year, make sure you type it correctly. And then you select the type of goals, performance or professional development. Once you have a couple goals um, uh, added into your system, then you can just click the plus symbol next to uh, the category and year that you wanna add. You can add a goal number, which will order them on your report. That's the only thing that's good for. Uh, so if you want a, one of your goals to appear at the top, like it's, it's one of your uh, top priority goals, then you can list it, um, put a goal number there and, and uh, have a little bit of control over um, how they appear on your report. Now, you'll notice that the goal field itself is a required field um, and that is, that's where you need to type in the goal. And when we're creating goals, they need to be smart. Um, and I believe that has that on that goals website that I was telling you about, but they need to be spe specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. That's the acronym SMART. In your system, you will be adding your 2019 goals. Those are the only goals that you need to add a progress against the goal. So you write the goal and then you, in the progress box, you um, write what it is that you did to accomplish that goal during 2019. Now you will not delete a goal. If you find that you had a goal written in there that you didn't actually get around to, don't just delete it from the system because your supervisor will be like, hey, what happened to this goal? We discussed it last year and now it's missing. Um, instead, in the progress against the goal, go ahead and put down what happened um, uh, that you didn't accomplish that. Maybe some, your county lost some funding um, and you weren't able to accomplish what you originally set out to do. Maybe you lost staff and you had, ended up covering for someone else or for another position. Uh, so make sure you write down what happened that that goal did not get accomplished. And then hopefully your supervisor already knows about that and the two of you have worked um, together to create another alternative goal and then you can add that to the system and then write progress against that goal. 
for your 2020 goals, you will not be adding progress because we are just now starting the year. So if you've written a goal for 2020 and you've already accomplished that goal, I think you need to reprioritize it and talk to your supervisor again and, and see if you need to change those goals. Um, if you were recently hired, Laura is asking, um, should we only write 2020 goals? Again, that's a conversation with your supervisor. Maybe your goal in 2019 was to get familiar with the extension system, um, and that could be a performance goal um, or a professional development goal, depending on how you write it. Um, but again, that's a discussion with your supervisor as to whether or not they want you to have 2019 goals in here. Um, and they will just print on separate, um, in different parts of the extension manual report document. There's a one narrative section in here that's just like an open narrative where you're going to put extension curriculum narrative. Um, you can add a year and then you will write in your narrative. And this is um, for people that if you're new here, you probably don't have anything to put in the system. But for example, if you were um, helping to rewrite the real money, real world um, curriculum in the past year or so, you might put a little bit about what your role was in that rewriting of that curriculum. Uh, so uh, curriculum is something that you probably are only doing if you've been around for a while. So our documents, if you need a dossier document, um, you'll find it under documents, um, but we don't need that dossier document uh, for our extension annual reporting process. We need the one that's under here where it says document annual report. Now they tell me, um, Vita has said that they have set it up so that the default year is set up for 2019. But if you run your report and you find that's not the case um, for you, just click on the show advanced filter, select 2019 for the year and then generate your report again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this or change my share. If I can find it. Yeah. Can you see my uh, Vita system? Yep. Okay. Um, an Excel spreadsheet is what was showing <laughs> on my screen. Okay. So this is Vita. This is the landing page. Again, this is um, the gray. This is a navigation bar. This helps you move around in the system. If you hover over one of these and you notice that there is a box with an arrow, that means it's going to generate a new tab for you. If you hover over it and you see a piece of paper, that means it's going to give you a document and this little um, envelope means it's going to generate an email for you. Just a little bit about the navigation bar. Um, this is the curate elements data tile that you were you will um, press um, the first time you are coming into the system. So if you don't see this elements data um, menu item, then you need to click here. Um, and again, that's an automated overnight process. Uh, you can try to email Vita at osu.edu and see if they can get you um, processed any quicker. Uh, they might be able to. Um, just let them know we've got a deadline coming up. If you do not have this department tab, again, you will email Vita at osu.edu uh, because you need this to report your extension programs. They also have some helpful, helpful documents down here. This is um, these were created by the OD team, um, the Office of Dis Distance Education and E-Learning. That's a mouthful. It says right down here. Um, anyway, uh, so if you want to click on any of these to see what they've uh, got under their documents, helpful documents, um, then you could uh, look at those. There's also a quick little introduction video uh, that talks a little bit about the Vita system if you want to watch that video. Um, I think it's like six minutes long or something. We're going to go ahead and um, come into the uh, department extension. Oh, one other thing I want to um, point out before I leave the screen. A couple other things, actually. 
um, I have other powers than you. Um, you will not have an admin link, for example, on your navigation. You probably will not have an impersonate user unless someone has given you permissions to um, impersonate them or giving you um, permission to be their delegate. If you need to um, add your supervisor as a delegate, um, your supervisor has asked you to add them as a delegate, you come over here to where it says account settings, which is right next to your name. I know I'm logged in because I see my name up here. So if I wanna add um, a delegate here, um, I can just type in the name and I believe I can do a name.number. Yes, and it will still work. There are parts of the system, if you're in the Vita section, then you can use, generally you can use your name.number. If you're in the elements data section, then you need to use last name, comma, first name. So if I select Brian to be a delegate on my account, um, I clicked on his name from the dropdown and then I just click on add you can see that Brian is now added as a delegate in my account. And this means that Brian can go into my account and he can, when he logs in, he would be impersonating me. So it would be as if I was doing whatever Brian was doing to my account. So just keep that in mind as you um, add people to your account. I can also come back in here again under account settings and just remove Brian. Uh, so this is where you would uh, manage that. This is also where you can put your uh, dossier name. For example, my um, name in the HR system, um, I have put my nickname in there as Debbie, D-E-B-B-Y, um, and I have um, put in here that on the dossier report, my name should appear as Deborah Lewis instead of Debbie Lewis. So those are the main things that I would use under there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, the curriculum narrative is uh, where we're about to head, so I will show you that momentarily. Again, it's under the department extension section. This is where you will see all of your extension stuff and things. So if you notice, when I came to the screen, I had some of these like opened up so I could see them. Um, so you can control that by clicking on these um, expand and contract uh, icons over here on the far right hand side. So our main sections within the um, extension module um, are programs and events. We have specializations, we have goals, and then extension curriculum narratives. So those are the four main parts to the extension module. And again, probably a majority of you will not have anything for the extension curriculum narrative section. I'm going to go ahead and start with the programs and events. So I'm going to expand here. And you can see here I have an extension program called 4-H Cartoons. And then I have two events associated with that. You can see here that I only have one that I can see on my screen. But that's because my copy of this event, um, which I have taught dangers of distracted driving, um, at more than one um, event, uh, cartoons event in the town. So if I open that up, I can see the other copied event associated with that. Now on my document, the only event title that is going to appear because I did teach, because that's what this little icon means, the book with the apple on top of it, I taught. So that means that the dangers of distracted driving adolescent development will be what appears as the event title on my teaching table in the correct part of my extension annual report. Now, if I come down here to one of my older programs, I think I have, yeah, right here is an example. Um, so I had younger youth development as my extension um, program title. And I put Cloverbud program. Um, but you'll see here, this is a, a calendar icon as opposed to a book with an apple on it. This just means I didn't teach. It's going to put, be populated in a different part of my extension program, my extension annual report. Um, so that, that annual report document that I generate from the system, um, it will just be listed in a different place. But there will still be there. So back up to here, 
it's good practice. So um, standard operating procedure should be uh, something like um, hopefully right after you do an event or within like 72 hours or so, um, you add the event to your, your, your system. Um, so you already have your extension program created. Um, you do an event uh, and the main event will be the first one that happened during the year. So you can see here, this one says January 11, 2019, the dangers of distracted driving. And then I had another one on February 11th. Um, so I just copied this event and it's being nested underneath the parent event here. But before I get ahead of myself, which I already did, um, we're going to go ahead and open up this program here to uh, view it. If you're brand new to the system, then you can add um, a program by clicking this button up here. If you click this program button up here at the top where it says next to the programs and events title, all of the fields are going to be blank. Um, that means you'll have to select the reporting year. If I click this program button here, since it's next to the 2019 programs and events title, subtitle, it's going to have 2019 filled in as my program year already for me. So there's multiple different ways and places you can add events and programs. Um, for this one, since it's already here, I'm going to go ahead, I will click on the edit pencil. Um, keep in mind, if you have programs from previous years, you can copy a program from one year to the next year or from a 2017 program to a 2019 program, but do not try to copy the events that were associated with it back in 2017 and make them 2019 because that will confuse the system. So once you have your um, extension programs established as, you, um, as your career progresses, you can copy those programs from one year to the next. And then just um, each, new, each new year, reporting year, you're gonna add events anew, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click on this edit pencil because I wanna edit it instead of try to add a new one. So you can see right up here at the top, it says I'm editing 4-H cartoons. So the title of my program is 4-H Cartoons, Reporting Year, uh, Plan of Action, and this is a drop down. Let me just give you a quick tour of Plan of Action. Our 80s and 90s are the signature programs that we've had um, around for a few years now. Um, even if they're graduated signature programs, they're still happening, they're still occurring in multiple counties, so we still have them in the system. The 100 level is going to, in general, be our agriculture programs, our ag and natural resources. Our 200 level are going to be family and consumer sciences. The so 300 level will be our 4-H programs in general. 400 level is our community development programs. And then you'll have an opportunity to select a few down here um, at the bottom that are kind of like new and emerging issues or uh, a local priority. So depending on which plan of action you select for this program is going to change. Um, it's going to be a filter for uh, the extension event that you add um, associated with this program. And I can show you that when I open up one of the events associated with this program. Um, we're going to select our program area. Those are just our four program areas. This is priority. Um, it used to be called impact area. Uh, so we have our six priorities there. Uh, just select the most appropriate one. You can only select one. So what is the one that uh, best describes this program that you're adding? Uh, statewide team, this is not a required field, but if the program that you're, you're conducting, if this program is associated with one of those statewide teams, um, then go ahead and select the statewide team. It doesn't mean that the um, that you're on the statewide team. You don't have to be on that statewide team uh, to click on it. It just helps those statewide team leaders. Um, they can request a data pool from me and we can generate a report that tells them what's going on across the state that um, kind of like has to do with the statewide team um, that they're leading. Days planned and days spent. Um, again, I gave a definition of those. These question marks in here, uh, they haven't ha uh, been populated yet, so don't even bother clicking on them. 
Um, county highlight item. This is, uh, we used to write our county highlights. I'm not sure if those will be coming back, but county highlight item would be um, a program that you want to highlight with your supervisor. So in other words, if you have, um, you know, five large P programs in your profile, don't click every one, don't click this uh, county highlight item for every, all five of those programs. That means they're not as special, okay? So this is, this would be something that you really want to highlight with your supervisor and make sure that they're aware of this um, particular program and the um, outputs and outcomes that it had. So keywords, uh, this keyword list is filtered by the program area that you selected. Uh, so the keyword list, the total keyword list is a pretty long list. Uh, so once you select your program area, it filters it down. And then you can filter it even further. If you know what you're looking for, uh, for example, I'm looking for the word Cloverbud. Uh, so I can click here. This is not a Cloverbud program. I'm just giving you an example. Um, so it'll give me everything, all of the keywords that have like the CLO in it. So I got 4-H clothing leader, uh, member training, and then I got Clover Buds. So if you want to filter through that list a little bit faster even, um, then you can do that using this filter selection. You have five keywords that you can use. Um, if I uncheck one of these, you'll see available uh, becomes a one. That means I still have one more that I can select. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're adding keywords that you can select up to five. Uh, so if I you know, pick a couple of these off, you can see I have two more left that I can pick. If I pick one more, you'll see that it comes to a negative one and you're gonna get a little error message that says, hey, you selected too many keywords. So this um, checkbox is a multiple select item. So situation description, what, why is it that you're offering this program? What's the need in the county? Um, what's, what's going on that, that uh, compelled you to offer this program? Um, who is the target, uh, target audience? Um, in this case, it's juvenile traffic offenders. And I think I spelled juvenile wrong. I, I believe I did. This is not a word processing program. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, so you can copy and paste um, from a Word document into here, into these fields. Um, before I go much further, I just wanted to give you a heads up. These are narrative fields that you can edit. So if I want this to be bolded, I just highlight it and it's a WYSIWYG editor. So what you see is what you get. Um, just uh, you can add bulleted lists, you can add numbered lists, you can indent, uh, de decrease indent. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. If I want this to appear centered on my document, I can click that button. Uh, so you can do um, pretty easy editing um, just by using this WYSIWYG editor up here. All right, so target audience I described, you're just gonna tell us who, the, who it is that you want to come to this program. Who are you targeting? Program objectives, uh, just like our goals, our program object objectives should be smart ob um, objectives. So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound. Basically, what is it that you want the learners to get out of this program or the program participants? What do you want um, them to accomplish, to change, to whatever it might be? Uh, activities, products, um, this is all uh, going to start to look like a logic model if you are familiar with that logic model. So these next two fields are our outputs. So activities products might be um, we had like uh, 20 uh, car team sessions um, with uh, 20 different schools and locations uh, during the 2019 reporting year. Um, so activities products are kind of like what did you do? Um, uh, did you have any uh, partnerships that were developed? That could be a product. Um, uh, did you develop handouts? Um, what was it? Uh, what are the activities products that you can put um, that supported this program during the year? And this is why I kind of say go ahead and get that program uh, set up because you'll notice that these are the only required fields. So you see the red asterisks. These are the required fields. And then it's made it so that um, you can kind of add events as the year goes along. And then at the end of the year, you can kind of summarize those events in these fields here. 
That's how the system was intended to be used. Participation, you've described already who your target audience was. So participation would be um, who actually came. So um, you might say, you know, we had 100 juvenile traffic offenders and their parents who attended our 20 different meetings. Um, I'm just making up stuff right now. <laughs> uh, so, but general, your participation might have some numbers associated with it, kind of like adding up all your events associated with this, and then a short description of, of what they did um, or who they were. So the next part is our, um, the outcomes. So outcomes, we're talking about some type of change. And I've tried to make this easier by doing the ABCs. So we have a short-term outcome is some type of change in awareness. Um, this is, uh, could be also uh, knowledge, attitude, skills, aspiration changes, or you might have um, hear people uh, call those CASA changes. Medium-term outcome is some type of change in behavior. Uh, uh, and then long term would be some type of change in condition. So let's give an F, I've been given a lot of 4 H examples. Let me give an FCS example. So a short term, um, they might be coming to a financial awareness program. Um, so they are learning how to use a budget. So in during the program, they are taught how to use a budget. Um, change of behavior would be that they actually go home and they create a household budget and they actually stick to it and use it. So that would be their change of behavior. And then change in condition, they're able to save enough money um, that they can buy something that they could not afford before. So that's just a quick example of awareness, behavior, condition, or long, medium, and short-term um, outcomes. Now, you don't you won't necessarily have these boxes filled in every year. Hopefully you'll have at least a short-term outcome uh, recorded for all of your programs, but you might not have a medium-term and long-term. Those things are harder to measure. This is where you can put in a testimonial. Um, for example, you had somebody come into your office, you know, six months after the program, and they're telling you how their life has changed because of the program that they attended. Now, Generally, that's the best way to figure out if it's your program that made the difference, because if they believe it's your program that made the difference, then you can go ahead and share that information in a medium or long term um, outcome statement. Just don't use their names. Um, just, you know, share the information as a medium or a long term outcome statement. So make a narrative up. Um, the other thing you could put into here and some supervisors are okay with it, some aren't, um, but you could do an expected um, outcome. So in six months, we expect that the participants will um, have changed this behavior or we'll, we'll see um, a, a increased um, profit uh, per head, uh, for example, for a long term. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, time in all cases. We're really talking about um, that condition, behavior, or awareness, which sometimes is associated with time, but sometimes it can happen quicker. Um, so that's why we don't give really time frames for when these things will happen, um, and we're, we keep it more general. So for this next section here, where it says evaluation, this is just asking you what type of, what type of um, item did you measure to come to the conclusion or to, uh, you know, measure these uh, short-term, medium-term, long-term outcomes. So these are multiple select checkboxes. There's not a limit on how many you can select per. per. Uh, so just go through there and say what you measured. Partnerships is the next section. All right, we have a, um, this is kind of important for us in Extension because um, one of the reasons, aside from your Extension uh, annual performance review uh, that we need to be collecting data is because we are federally funded um, from NIFA, <laughs> uh, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. So we are required to spend 25% of our budget, um, that's the state budget, on integrated research and extension and multi-state programs and projects, okay? So if you are doing a program, if this program is integrated research and extension, so you've done a lot, uh, 
research on the program and that program is based on that research, um, then go ahead and click on that in integrated research and extension. Or if you're working with an OARDC person, um, that could also be considered integrated research and extension. If it's multi-state, it might be a program that is offered by another state and you're delivering it here. Or maybe you're working with someone in another state to help them deliver the program in their state. Um, that could be multi-state. Maybe some of your program participants, maybe you live in one of our border counties and they're, um, the program participants are multi-state. There are many different things um, that will determine whether or not it's a multi-state program. So those are just a few. And if you have a specific question um, or scenario that you want to share with me, um, you can do that over email and I will get back to you about whether or not, yes, you, you should be clicking on that box. Multi-institutional would be, are you working with another institution, um, whether it's like Kent State or uh, Case Western, um, you're, you're working with another institution to deliver this program. OSU departmental, so you are working with another department outside of the extension department or the Department of Extension. Other, if you click on that one, um, you will see this box open up that says description of other. Um, and then you can also select none. Once you have selected these partnership, um, and again, this is a multiple select, so I can select both multi-state and integrated research and extension for this program. Um, and if it's both, please select all of them <laughs> that apply. Um, I could come in here and give a collaboration description. So this is describing the partnership that you just clicked on the boxes above, all right? So who is it that I'm working with at another institution? What other institution am I working with? Um, you can describe that collaboration in this field. This grant section, um, I need to go in and edit some of my grants, but it's supposed to be showing um, if I have added um, money of any kind into the system, um, then I can come back in here and click on, yes, this grant or this money is associated with this particular program. So for example, in elements, I might add in um, the fees that I collected to deliver the CARTEENS program. Um, once I've added those into the elements section, then that uh, CARTEENS will appear on this list and I, I can just click on it. So this is just a listing of all the monies that you have in your system. Team members down here. I've had at least one email, I think, or question from this group about how they can um, add what they've done as a program onto the other members of their team into their profiles. So this is where you're going to do that. Once you have filled out these fields up above, up above um, to the best of your ability, that's when I suggest adding a team member to your program. So for here, um, you can see I've added Brian Butler to this um, program, and um, I have already shared it with the team, with um, the members of this team. Here I can remove somebody from my team, um, and this will show me that I already shared it with them, and this will show that I am the owner of this particular program. So what happens when you add somebody here? And again, this is in the Vita section, so I can search by uh, name.number. What's your dot number, Danae? <laughs> I never 12.540. There you go. All right, so if I wanted to add Danae, I just click here and then I've added her to the system, this, this particular program. Um, and then you can see here that it hasn't been um, shared with her yet. It's just been added. So if I clicked on the share with team, this program would show up in Danae's uh, profile. Now, what it's doing is sending a snapshot, that's the best word I can think of, of um, this program with Danae. So Danae would get um, an item in her um, profile that has a little exclamation point that says shared program and she will be able to accept or reject. In fact, I have an example um, on the screen when I get back, when I close this program, I will show it to you. So what that does, again, it sends a snapshot to her. She can, once she's accepted it, change anything she wants to in those program fields up above and it will only change in her profile. 
So if she is in a different county and she had maybe an additional program objective or her, her outcome statements are definitely going to be different than mine because she has different numbers that she needs to add. But it's helping her out because this, a lot of these fields have been filled up, out. So if you're brand new to the system and you have um, a mentor or someone that you've worked with on a, a few programs, go ahead and ask them to share uh, and make you a team member on one of those programs so you can get a framework and get a better idea of um, you know, what, how, how to fill these fields in. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to start when you're, when you're brand new. And if you've been around for a while, if you have a new educator or program assistant or someone asking you for that assistance, please be nice and go ahead and add them as a team member to your program. Because again, after they've accepted it in their pro profile, you can come back in here and delete them and it's not going to affect, um, it's not gonna take that program out of their profile. They've, once they've accepted it, it's theirs. Now, if you are lucky enough uh, to get somebody, um, you're going to click on the submit button, not the cancel button. <laughs> um, and I want to cancel the changes to this program. Normally, I would save that, but um, I didn't want to like change it. So if you look down here, I have a VITA training test. I have actually, I have no idea where this came from. So that brings me to another point. If you are going to use that team member function, make sure that you um, yes, the, the session today is being recorded um, and I will send the link out uh, if we get it posted in a timely manner. <laughs> I hope we do. Anyway, so the VITA training test here, when you're adding a team member to your uh, programs, make sure you have communication with team members um, because if you add something or you add them as a team member and they go into their profile, they're going to be like, okay, where did this program come from? Came from? No, they're going to be questioning it. So they might just automatically click on this reject button. Um, and you don't want them to do that. You want them to actually accept the program. Um, so make sure you have that communication with team members. It's key when you're adding them as team members. I'm going to go ahead and click on this accept um, button. Actually, I'm going to look at it first. So um, it looks like somebody in OD was uh, making a test, either that or, here, let's just check down here at the bottom. Oh no, it was Brian, he was testing. <laughs> so that's the best way to do it, is go down and look at who the team members are and you can see who has um, added you as a team member. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. Now, if a program has been shared with you, this is awesome that it has been shared with you, um, but you want to come in here and make sure you fill in your own days planned and own days spent. So Brian has shared this program with me. My number of days planned and days spent are probably going to be different than Brian's days planned and days spent. So make sure you edit it, um, that much, at least, to this program. Um, but then I will also come in here and edit these other fields. So again, it's best if you have as much as you can filled out in all these program fields before sharing it with a team member. Um, this, Brian was just testing the, the feature. Okay. Debbie, there was a question about uh, programs being private versus public. Oh yeah, so let me open that window back up. So we work at a public institution. Um, that is why this um, default down here, private program, is set as a public program. Now, this is, a lot of this is just leftovers from our previous reporting systems, but when we purchased elements um, for our reporting system for the university, they had a private versus public um, uh, Kind of identifier in their system as well. So we just kept it in this extension profile. So since we work for a public institution, all this is doing is turning it off from searches and you really don't want to be able, you don't want to turn it off from searches. Now if you are, are doing some kind of publication that has priority, you know, information that shouldn't be published, 
um, until, for example, the um, publication is made public, then you can use that. Um, this is a private program. But for the most part, we work for a public institution. Just leave it selected as no, this program is public. All right, so that's a little bit about the program window. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to think I'll make a copy of this one. So um, once I had this program 4-H cartoons established, I went ahead and clicked on the plus symbol next to um, the title of the program, which gave me an event um, associated with this program. All right, so that's how I added this one from January 11th, 2019. And I'll come back and show you um, something else in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, click on, I'm gonna make another copy of this one. So I'm gonna click on this copy icon next to my original instance of this event. So it's generally better not to make a copy of a copy. Um, I'm gonna go up here and do this original one. So I'm gonna do this uh, as a copy. I'm gonna, we've already got our February one in here. Let's go ahead and do a March one. I'm gonna go ahead and change this title because again, the only title that prints on my document is that first initial title. So I'm gonna put the name of the high school in here just so it's easier for me to find it in the future. Personal notes. Um, this field is not a required field. I finally got that uh, uh, changed. It used to be called description, um, but I, I wanted them to change it to personal notes uh, to uh, make sure you guys realize that it doesn't actually print on any of your documents. This is where you can just take notes. Maybe you want to write the name of the teacher that you worked with um, or the contact at the school. It's not going to show up on any of your documents. It's a purely a place for you to keep personal notes. So if you don't want to put anything in that field, you don't have to. Is this a related copy? I'm going to say yes, this is a related copy because I want this to appear as one line in my table. If I said no, this is not a related copy, then it's going to spit it out onto a separate line in my teaching table. And I want to keep these as compact as possible. And since I taught the exact same thing, the dangers of distracted driving at this location as well, um, and on this date, I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, this is a related copy. All right, so the program it's associated with, you can see the drop downs uh, here. This is why we tell you do not add the program year in the program title, because when you get to this field, if you need to change the program it's associated with, if you have a year listed out here and the year listed here, you're going to be very confused of which one you need to select if you've made a mistake in what year it should be. All right, so um, I've, I've selected a date here already. Um, and I think I mentioned when we were going through the PowerPoint slides uh, that if it's a multi-day event, just select the first day or the last day, pick a date that you're gonna, you know, hopefully that it was occurring on. Um, Ohio should be the default state. Um, you're gonna select your county here in the drop dropdown. Um, Delivery method. This is a single select as well. Um, scope of the audience. This is a single select. So maybe this was just the county, uh, era, region. Uh, yes, we have some old terms in there. Um, this formal student evaluation is yes or no. And this doesn't have to be just triple ETs. Um, there is a cartoons evaluation that I used. So I'm going to describe, yes, formal student evaluation. Um, so when I click on that, it opens up a student evaluation um, description. So I'm just going to describe it was the end of session evaluation, the cartoons evaluation. Activity or the role, um, I was the organizer. If you have selected yes, you taught up here at the top, um, which you can't see on this one because it's not a new event and I will show you that in a minute. Um, please make sure that you have selected at least one method of, hey, I was a teacher. Okay, so if you select yes, I did teach and you were just the organizer, I know that's a lot. Um, but if you did not get up in front of a group of people and teach something, then um, 
don't have don't say yes to the um, did you teach um, so but at least have one item here that's some type of teaching contact hours how long was the session number of volunteers that it helped you with this and the volunteer hours um, these are just numbers that you can fill in these are all indirect contacts, including phone, email, uh, media appearances, distributed materials. These are just numbers, again, um, that you would be typing in here of indirect contacts. Direct contacts, these are, this is where we're gonna put our reg data. So hopefully you're collecting this information somehow. If you're working with a school, you might be able to ask that school for um, this type of information. And when you share with them that we are federally funded and we, kind of need this information to be continued to be federally funded, then um, uh, they usually are more willing to share it. Um, that's another thing on that AAEEO form, uh, the GoLink AAEEO. Um, we also put on there um, uh, a little script that you can read to participants that um, in other states it's been shown to help you increase the response rate of your participants. Now I've had at least one person point out to me that um, uh, Hispanic or Latino is listed here. Um, this direct contacts table used to say race slash ethnicity and now just says direct contacts. Um, we know that we have the Hispanic Latino listed in here. So if you get back one of those reg forms um, and they have selected Hispanic or Latino, um, just make sure you uh, put down that, that as their race slash ethnicity or their direct contact. Now, if we, um, the reason, this is a drawback to our system. Um, and since I have been working very hard to try to get them to update some of the other issues that we've had that are more minor, um, getting an entire new table added to this part of our system would be really hard for me right now. So I've been trying to um, work with them to get our, our known issues taken care of before I uh, tackle something like this, because technically what's going to happen um, if we separate out Hispanic or Latino, um, you will also need to have the race of that person in addition to whether they were Hispanic or Latino. Um, so that would require an entirely different chart. And there's no extension reporting system out there in any of our states that's able to track it that way. The 4-H online data is, is being tracked that way, but there is an entirely separate table to do that. Um, and since this is uh, built in-house, we haven't gotten that far yet, but we're, we're working toward that direction. Um, so right now, when I fill out, for example, we had our um, in the spring, for those of you who don't know, we had uh, a civil rights review. Um, and when they ask for that reg information, you can select um, Hispanic um, or you can put in a number for Hispanic. And what I did was uh, we just listed them as race unknown. That way we're not double counting them by clicking on uh, or adding a number for the race Hispanic. Um, uh, I'm sorry, ethnicity, Hispanic or Latino, and adding in their race. Um, so if someone has uh, told me on my, re on my AAEO form that they are Black um, uh, Hispanic, I'm going to enter them in this table as Hispanic. Okay. And then when I report the information in NIFA, it would just be race unknown, because that is an acceptable method of reporting. Our other drawback in this table, because if you've heard from the road shows, um, we're not supposed to be guesstimating whether they're male or female, for example, and we're also not supposed to guess their race. Um, the drawback of this table is we still have to guess, even if we don't know their race, which down here we have an unspecified, and if you don't know their races, you can put it down here under unspecified, but you still have to guess whether they're male or female. Okay if you're talking about unspecified. Hopefully, if you're filling these numbers out here above two more races or above, you are not guessing. You have gotten that information from them in some manner. Down here at the bottom, this list of indicators, this is where, um, uh, remember way back in the extension program, um, this is where these numbers are coming. Uh, 
<laughs> they're, they're being filtered by whatever you selected as the plan of action. So if I had selected a different plan of action, this list of um, indicators down below the first five um, is going to change or will likely change. Some of them have similar indicators, some of them have the same indicators, but they're going to be driven by that extension program and the plan of action that you selected for the extension program. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, submit this. I think it will take it. Save as a new event, we say yes. Okay, and now you can see we have a January, a February, and a March. So if I wanted to add another event underneath this car teams where maybe I didn't teach, maybe I organized something um, like a prom event, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus symbol next to the, the program title. So this is one where I'll have to create my own, um, a new event, so. And it doesn't really matter what my title is because I'm gonna select, no, I didn't teach. So if you want to just write whatever the event title was, um, you can do that as well. In general, if you're going to select the Yes, I Did Teach, you're going to want the event title of the original instance of the event to be the topic you actually taught. So if you noticed in my last example, I said I taught. My event title did not say for each car teams because that's not descriptive of what I taught. Um, my title of that one was The Dangers of Distracted Driving. Um, and I think I had adolescent development as kind of like my theme for that. Um, so um, that was descriptive of uh, the topic that I taught because I said, said, yes, I did teach. So on this one, I'm going to say, no, I was just the organizer on this, um, but I was there. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and leave this as uh, January 7th, 2019. I have no idea why it's, oh, I know why it's doing that. Um, so it's, it's defaulting to January 7th because um, today is January 7th, but since this is a 2019 program that I'm adding this event to, it's keeping my year as 2019. If you are familiar with our past systems, um, it, as, um, it kept today's date, um, but it also kept the year. So we would get a lot of people going in there after the first of the year, adding their previous year's events, and then wondering why it would not populate on their document. Um, and then we come to find out it was because they forgot to change the year. So in 2019, um, Monday, uh, January 7th was on a Monday. So I'm going to go ahead and see if that'll let me leave it as that. Um, so you'll see some of these are required and some of them aren't. I'm just going to add a quick Add some quick numbers in here. You'll see this first one, um, this first indicator down here is going to um, uh, auto populate based on those numbers um, from the table above. Pull those out. I'm going to click on submit. I have to select a county. So if you make a mistake, it should give you an error message. So you can see now, um, these two events are indented underneath this uh, original instance of the event, and you can see it says copies two. So this is counting the, this, this original one in January, and then it's counting the two copies. So when this appears on my table, I'm gonna have um, the dangers of distracted driving um, as the event title in my table, and then it's gonna say um, three times offered and it's going to add up all of my participants from all three of these, and that's going to be the number of um, participants or enrolled, number enrolled. And then um, underneath um, section 2B of my extension in a report, I'm going to have another event. Um, I won't see this title, but I'm going to see all of the reg data that I entered. 
So it's going to be at the bottom of that. It's going to have a summary of non-teaching events. Um, so it's just going to populate to a different part of your document. All right. So do I have any uh, questions about programs and events that you guys can think of right now? I'm going to go ahead and move on. It's already 1116. So we're going to try to spend a little bit of time. I've told you um, where to find the goals. Um, uh, that go link. And again, that points to the, I just popped it in the chat window, that points to the operations website. Um, and it will have examples. Uh, first, you'll, you'll see descriptions of or definitions of what a performance goal is and what a professional development goal is. And it will tell you how many to have of each. And then if you click um, in the paragraph, it will sh also show you um, some examples of good professional development and performance goals and how they're written. Extension curriculum narrative. Again, this is just an open text field. I'm going to go ahead and just open it so you can see. Um, you're going to just describe your efforts for what curricul whatever curriculum development you did during the 2019 year. And the last section that I kind of skipped over was specializations. If you don't have a um, edit pencil here, you might have um, a plus symbol here. I'm not sure what that was message was. We'll look at that again. I know they've been working on the specializations because somebody was having some issues with it. I'm going to go ahead and select um, two. But these are just a select, um, you can select up to two. I'm going to hit submit, save changes. And they may have cleared out specializations, so you might want to double check that and see if your specializations are um, remaining. So that's it for the extension profile. I want to spend a little bit of time in the elements data showing you the types of things that you're going to add into this section. Um, to do that, I think I'm going to just quick pop back to our, um, our slideshow because I have some of that stuff kind of spelled out there. All right. Can everybody see my um, PowerPoint again? Going to move on. All right, so teaching activities. Um, some teaching activities you might be putting into here. Um, for example, I know that I had someone ask me about individual instruction. This is where you're going to put that. Um, if you are teaching an Ohio State course um, and it's got a course number associated with it, that information should be auto populated into your profile. For the most part, um, the types of things that you will be adding into elements, um, you're going to spend a majority of your time in the extension profile. But for um, example, if you are invited to do a guest lecture, um, somebody else is teaching a course that has a, call, a course number associated with it, um, and you're just coming in to teach for a week or two of their semester, you would put that under extension and continuing education instruction, and you would select guest lecture for the type of instruction. Um, for example, I used to teach um, some sessions of the instrumentation um, class here in uh, the ASL department here on campus. Uh, so I would teach um, web-based survey design um, best practices, and I also taught about focus groups. So those were two guest lectures that I would come into the um, elements section of VITA and add to the extension and continuing education instruction. Individual instruction is another thing that you will be adding into this part of the system, okay? Um, so individual instruction would be any type of email, phone call, office visit that you've had on a one-on-one -on -one basis where you're being instructive. Um, so there's a difference between instruction and informative. 
So if you're answering the phone and they're asking you, hey, when is the next uh, 4-H committee meeting? And you tell them uh, Wednesday at seven o'clock and you give them the location. While informative, that's not really instructive. But if you are um, trying to help a volunteer, for example, um, get through a particular, you know, something that's happening or going on, um, or you're having some type of individual instruction with that person, um, that's where you would put this. Um, so, for example, you would keep track of your individual instruction during a given year and kind of keep track of what it is that you're talking to that person about or you're instructing them or you're emailing them about um, so that when you come at the end of the year, you can um, kind of count up for example, all of the um, individual instruction you had that was around volunteer development, for example, or everything that was around crops management. So you're adding up during the entire year um, how many of those you had, which would include, again, office visits, phone calls, emails, something where you're working with someone one-on-one. -on -one. The reason we put it in here was because if you put it into your extension program section, um, you would be adding a separate event for everything. <laughs> and that would make it so that you would have, you might have a hundred events because I might talk to a hundred different volunteers on a one-on-one -on -one basis or office visits or emails. Um, and that would be a lot of events. So we just kept that in this section. Um, so you can add it as one entry for the entire year. For example, I would have an entry called individual instruction, colon, volunteer development, um, or volunteer management, whatever that is. Um, and then I would have a total number associated with that. The other type of extension and continuing education instruction that you would put in here would be what I like to call a one-off sessions session. So for example, um, you don't have a large P program associated with it but it's something that you took time to do during the year. Um, as an example, the co local Kiwanis has invited you to come and speak to the group um, about what it is that's going on in extension in your county. Now, you don't have a marketing program um, in your profile. Uh, you don't have anything that you can associate that particular event with, but you still want to um, uh, highlight that in your profile or on your performance review document for the year, then you could put it into the extension and continuing education instruction. You would just select for both individual instruction and for a one-off, you would select extension for the type of course. For the guest lecture, you'll select guest lecture for the type of course. So those are the other types of things that you would add. And these are kind of where you could find them in our old system over here on the right. All right. So other things that go into here, publications. Um, so these used to be our, um, in two different sections, published works and creative works. So I kind of uh, put a little abbreviation here for which one is which. Remember that for each publication you add into elements, you need to go to that supporting data back in elements on that gray menu bar, the navigation bar, um, and fill out the supporting data for all of your, each of your publications for the year. Now, if you have publications that are from previous years, just remember, focus on 2019 right now, um, because that's the reporting year that we're worried about um, so that you can get your performance review documentation done um, on time. So, I just pulled out a few of the most used um, sections in the publications um, area, most used by extension. So for example, abstract or short entry, that would be um, an actual abstract. So you've written a dissertation, you've written your master's thesis, whatever it might be, and you had that abstract of that published, okay? Um, so we're talking like a 900 word abstract. This is not the same thing as, for example, extension annual conference or maybe one of your uh, professional organization annual conferences where they have a short description of what your session is that you're teaching at the, the conference um, and they have that published in the conference proceedings. That's not the same thing, okay? Abstract is a true abstract. So very long, 900 words, et cetera. And it's describing all of the findings and the recommendations, et cetera, of uh, whatever the, the publication was. Um, if you have written a book, 
that also goes here in published works. This does not include a 4-H project book. If you wrote a 4-H project book, um, that would go under bulletin, technical report, or fact sheet. If you've written a chapter in an edited book, it would go in here. Um, if you have uh, published a poster, like had a poster um, uh, at a poster session at a annual conference, um, that would go under conference. In general, conference is um, something that is a physical thing that has been published. So if you had a white paper that you wrote and that white paper was published in the conference proceedings, then you could put that under conference. Um, if you've done a national presentation uh, where you're presenting um, scholarly work to your peers, that would go under publications and down here at the bottom where it says presentation. General press articles. Popping back up here after conference. General press articles. Don't enter anything under general press articles. <laughs> if you've written a newspaper article, for example, or you have a newspaper column, or maybe you've written something for a lay magazine like Dairy Journal or something like that, those items would go under other creative works. The only thing that goes under general press article is if you have read a book and you've written a book review, that book review was published, or you've read a journal, you've written a journal review, that journal review was published somewhere. That's the only type of thing that goes onto general press article. Okay. Um, if you put other things in there, it's it's either one not going to populate on your documents, or two, it's going to populate into the wrong part of your document. So in general, stay out of general press article, um, and just put uh, things like newspapers, newsletters. Um, magazine articles under other creative works. If you've written a journal article for a peer-reviewed journal article, uh, either a peer-reviewed journal article, an editor-reviewed journal article, put that under journal article. If you've done any type of audiovisual work, which includes uh, radio or television, then that goes under media. Multimedia databases and websites would include things like your blog entries, um, I know that they're kind of like a blog entry is really different than like managing a website, for example. Um, but this is the best place for us to put them right now. So this is what we're dealing with. So um, a blog entry, um, if, you're, uh, if you have a website um, that goes under multimedia database websites. Other creative works, um, again, uh, newspaper articles, uh, newsletters, uh, that type of thing goes under other creative works. Potential publication under review, that's just another item. You can select it if um, you've submitted a publication but it hasn't been published yet. You can put that under potential publication under review. And then once it has been published, you can change the category that it's in, fill out a few new fields, and then it'll be um, in the correct part of your document. Money. So even though the section says grants, any type of money can go in here, um, except for don't put your county appropriations <laughs> monies in here, dollars in here. So if you have a research grant or contract, training grant or contract, subcontract, clinical trial, gift, scholarly award, um, for example, a JSEP scholarship, um, any money for professional development or other, for example, a fee collected at a workshop, you can put that money in here, um, and then again, it will be, uh, it'll print on your documents. Um, sometimes it can be a little frustrating, like subcontract we discovered um, this past week that it's not populating on our extension data report in the proper place. Uh, so you might have to do a little trial and error, um, like change it from a subcontract to a training contract um, to get it to show up on your document. Um, so when you're adding things, especially into this grant section, um, add one, if you have multiple items to add, add one, check your document, make sure it's printing where you think it should print, and then um, if it is, go ahead and add other ones, okay? It's always a good practice to do that anyway. Other professional activities that you're adding in here, um, Uh, if you would, um, you can add 4-H, are you talking about like 4-H committee scholarships um, 
that you get from your 4-H committee. You can add them as other monies. Like, let me go back to that slide. You can add them as other. You can just describe that because once you click on other, um, I think it's a radio button actually that you can describe like 4-H committee funds. And again, whatever money that you add into this section, um, you can go back into your extension programs and select it from the list um, with checkbox to say that it's, it's money that's supporting that particular program. But don't add your county appropriations. Um, you can also, if you don't want to add that into the grant section of elements, Francis, uh, you're asking the question about uh, money from uh, your 4-H committee. You can also add that under um, activities, products, or, or outputs um, in some other way in, inside that um, open ended description for that program. So there's multiple different places where you could add it. Um, professional activities, uh, th these are like your service types of things. Um, uh, if you got an award, um, that's considered a distinction. Um, we used to call them awards in our old systems. Now it's under distinction. So all of these can be at, uh, found underneath professional activities. If you um, are belong to a committee, um, you uh, and it's a unit level committee. So for example, if you served on the search committee for a position, um, you can add that as a committee membership. Whereas your JSEP membership would be under professional activities add a new membership. So if you see the word committee in front of it, that's generally a college level or a department level um, committee. Whereas membership is um, your professional society. So if you're on uh, for example, the professional development um, or the awards uh, committee on JSEP, um, you would put that under membership. Um, awards, again, um, would go under distinction. You would just select whether it's a teaching, research, or service award. Editorials, if you are, serve as an editor, um, you can add that under uh, professional activities editor. Um, or if you serve, to, for example, um, to review proposals for uh, one of your national organizations for your annual conference, um, you can uh, select review, uh, reviewer under editorial. Other professional public service, what other, other, prof what other professional public service are you doing? Um, that's kind of a general catch-all category. And that is some place where you can do um, local committees and advisory boards under other professional or public service. Well-timed question, Marcus, thank you. Um, strategic initiatives, uh, this is where you can put your diversity statement. And this is mainly for faculty who are going for promotion. So if you don't wanna remember that particular item, then I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit about professional activities and where you're gonna put those. Narratives, again, I told you a little bit earlier. Do we have any faculty members in the room who are going for promotion? If you are a faculty member going for promotion, then you will um, fill out the narratives in the, um, that you'll find in the VITA section. Just make sure when you're filling out these narratives that you click on the save button for each narrative box. So they have been separated out. Um, you can see with the asterisks over here on the right hand side of this particular slide, these are the, the required um, uh, narratives that you need to fill out for the Department of Extension. Um, the other ones are, if you want to fill them out, you can. All right. Um, and again, only faculty members right now need to fill in the narratives. The only narrative that you need to be worried about is if you any, did any curriculum development um, during the, the extension programming year, uh, then you would put that into the extension program. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, uh, Lydia is correct, Francis, um, in answering your question. So other professional public service. Um, so extension and report, they're due by January 15th. So let's go look and see where we're going to generate that real quick.
Okay, so moving back into Vita. Please let me know if you can't see my screen. I just um, hovered over department and clicked on annual report and you'll see two buttons here. Um, 2019 should be the default selected, um, at least that's what I was told recently. Um, but if you want to double check, you can click on show advanced filter and it's not selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that drop dropdown, um, select 2019 as the year. And then I'm going to click up here where it says request annual report and it's going to generate it fairly quickly. Um, and you can see um, I don't have a whole lot of information in here. I use my account as a teaching um, account. Oh, let's see. Here I have something that I need to go and edit. So if you guys see anything in your, um, your tables uh, that does not conform to the year filter that you just applied to it, Generally, these are coming from the element section and you just need to go back into your profile and I'll need to add an end date into this guest lecture example um, so that it, it falls off my report. Um, I'm going to be posting, Melinda, I'll post the PowerPoint on our um, LOD website. And again, um, this specific section where you can find um, I'm trying to type and write at the same or talk at the same time. Um, I'm going to type that into the chat box real quick. Okay, um, so we've had several different people report that the activities products, even though they had something um, in that section, is showing up as none. Um, so uh, that is a known problem, Sarah uh, is asking that question. I just got an email this morning from the OD team that says that they should have that um, resolved by the end of the week. So sit tight and that should be um, fixed relatively quickly. Um, again, this is just kind of looking through my report. Um, if there are some things on your um, profile that are printing that you don't think it should be there, um, probably the best thing to do is going, no Sarah, you're not going crazy, is to go back into um, elements and uh, check on um, end dates, etc. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about where what we were just talking about. So for example, I had that guest lecture that was showing up randomly from uh, 2013. So I'm gonna hover over elements data. I'm gonna go right to the teaching activities because I know that's where it lives. And I'm gonna do the teaching activity type um, for, that's probably, probably everything I have in there is extension. Um, let's see, I wonder if I can just do a 2013. It won't let me click off of that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this was my guest lecture example. This is the one that's showing up randomly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the title of this and I'm going to edit it. Uh, so this is something that's populating from my previous uh, reporting system. So this button might say uh, edit record instead of add manual record. But what this is doing is telling me uh, that um, I had a start date of April 2013. And on our old system, we didn't have to set end dates. So I'm going to go in here and edit this end date. and do April 2013. I'm gonna to have to actually select a specific date. And then I'm gonna leave everything else the same. So when I go back into that Vita um, report, see this extension annual report, um, that was again on my guest lecture table. So we're gonna see if that disappears. Hopefully once I click the refresh button and I scroll down here, that will be gone now. Yes, it is, good. So that's my best advice is if you see things in this, um, for example, table that aren't supposed to be here, go back into elements, open up the item. Um, if you notice, I did not use the shortcut to add an end date. I opened up the actual um, uh, entry and I changed um, and I added an end date for that one.
So I'm not sure that, uh, Marie, I have um, gotten um, a specific answer to the stewardship role. What I would probably do is um, add them as a service in the professional activities. Um, and you could add them as a professional activity to your unit. In other words, your county as the unit. Um, but again, that might be a discussion with your supervisor as to whether you should add them at all. Um, I would think that um, since you spent time during the, the reporting year um, in support of those stewardship goals, that the um, professional service would be the, the best place to add that under professional activities. And um, you could do like uh, service to, uh, you could do that under other professional public service. All right, so um, one other thing we did talk about um, the uh, whatever publications you have in your your um, your system, your profile, you're going to come over here to supporting data and add supporting data for your publications. Now, some of you may hover over supporting data and say, "Ooh, professional development, I can add professional development here. Remember, the system was developed for faculty members. The only people that should be adding professional development um, in this section would be faculty members who have taken some type of or done some type of professional development to improve their teaching skills. That is the only type of professional development that should be entered into the system. It's not going to report on, it's not going to print on your extension and your report. It will only report print on your extension or your dossier document, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to come under supporting data and I'm going to look at publications. You'll see that everything has been filtered out. So if I know I have a uh, something I want to add to a presentation, for example, um, I can come down here and select on presentations. I can also, if I uncheck that, I can select all and I can see everything that's in my system. But that's a little too much for me to look at at once. <laughs> so I'm just going to look at their presentations. So for example, if I did one of these presentations um, uh, with someone else, I could come in here and um, update this. And for example, um, let's say I was a co-author on this one. I could click on the edit there and I could put my, this is where I'm gonna add my description of effort. Um, and if you have stuff that is coming over from uh, the uh, RIV systems or past systems that we've had, um, you're going to have to go in and add this information anew, even though you used to have it. In there. I'm going to say I'm a co-author on here. Um, present contribution, let's say 80%. It was a peer-reviewed presentation, even though it says invited <laughs> presentation. It's okay. And then I can type in what my role was. I can click on save changes and then that will show up um, as a completed um, supporting data. So sometimes if you haven't filled in that supporting data, it's not going to print on your document. So if you if you see that something is missing from your publications, like you know you have it in the system, but it's not showing up on your document, supporting data would be the first place I would check. Um, the second place I would check are would be years or dates. Okay, so I'm going to see real quick if I have missed any other questions. I think I've talked about radio and television shows. Um, professional development. Okay, that's a good question and I know I've gotten that in the past. So under elements, um, like I said, do not put professional development here. Don't click on supporting data professional development. Um, when you do professional development, you are performing a service. Um, basically. Um, so you are trying to um, increase your knowledge around a specific thing. Some type of professional development would go under uh, professional activities. So I'm just going to click there. Um, here's my example of a professional development. So I'm going to go ahead and somebody added me. <laughs> Not me. All right, so here I have um, professional development. This is um, a type of activity under attendee. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit this record. So you can see that I have this under other professional public service. So this is where you would add any type of professional development. So your 4-H fundamentals training, you could put in here. So the name of activity would be 4-H fundamentals training. Um, the category of activity, you could select um, professional development. So you, you'll see that professional development is not a drop down here. Um, if you went to a conference, an annual conference, um, or a, prof, uh, a you know professional organization conference, you could put par conference participation. Um, but if it's just a general professional development, I would just click on this little radio button and then say professional development. And then for the drop down for type of activity, you're going to say attendee. And then you can add this. Was this a one time occurrence? You could say true or false. Um, what was the start date? What was the end date? Um, make sure these dates fall within the calendar year of 2019, for example. Um, what was the organization? Um, fill out wherever you see a blue question mark. Those, those fields will print on your document. If you see a red asterisk, you can't leave this screen until you have those fields filled in. Just an FYI. Can we put it here as an event if we create a professional development co uh, program? Um, Katie, can you unmute yourself and kind of explain your question a little bit more? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I was just wondering if you can have it listed here, like as you're showing and as like um, under the um, extension, if you create a program that is titled professional development and then put it in underneath that as an event as well. So um, if you are talking about your own professional development, then put it here in elements under other profession, other public um, service, other pro professional public service. Do not create an extension program if you're not the one delivering the program. Do you understand the distinction there? Yeah. If, if okay. it's professional development that you are participating in, either add it to one of your goals in the extension module or at, as a professional development goal and what you're accomplishing is that goal or add it here under other professional public service if you are attending. If it's something that you developed to deliver to four people, then hopefully you have um, either uh, created an, a program in a, the extension program section, or maybe you've added it as a pr presentation here under elements. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, I think that I have addressed all the other questions that we got submitted prior to uh, the training today. Um, but if not, um, if you want to either unmute yourself or um, jot a question in the chat window, um, I can see if I can help uh, you with uh, your questions. Um, otherwise, um, up on the screen here, I'm just popping up um, the last few remaining uh, VITA office hours that I'm conducting uh, um, next week or so. Um, to get into those, um, I just have that general link. Uh, so if you want to join the meeting, it's 622-635-567. Uh, you can see the dates um, posted there on that um, slide. Uh, and just a reminder, if you have a technical issue, contact vita at osu.edu. Um, and department extension is missing, uh, again, add them, ask them to add you. Either add you back in or add you anew uh, if you're brand new to the system. Um, so um, Maggie was the one who had her extension programs that had disappeared. So Maggie, do you mind if I log into you um, as you um, in the, uh, the system to see if we can see if they're there and to show what it looks like if they're missing? <laughs> no, absolutely, go ahead. And what was your dot number again? My dot number is Rivera.482. 
Okay, let me do the new share here. And I'm gonna go back to um, Vita. Four eight two. Yes, four eight two. Is that correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna impersonate Maggie, <laughs> just so I can show you what was happening on her profile. Hey, look! They fixed it. Wow! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was happening before? Um, Maggie logged in yesterday and discovered that, or sometime uh, earlier <laughs> um, and discovered that um, it said no programs or events um, listed. It had it in all caps, red letters. Um, so it was very obvious that there was nothing here, but she had her specializations, her goals, etc. cetera, um, but nothing was listed here. So after she panicked, she sent an email. <laughs> well, I sent an email on her behalf because she kind of asked the question for the registration uh, for today's session. Um, so you were not the only one that that happened to, by the way. They also had to fix somebody else that had a similar issue um, today. Uh, so um, we were able to go back into the system. The OD folks uh, found her, her other, um, her program uh, list and was able to restore it to her profile. So when I logged in as Maggie yesterday, I was getting the same message that she was because again, when you impersonate someone, um, you are literally logging in as them. So you should be able to see the same things that they saw. Okay. Yes, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop being Maggie. So again, if you see that your programs are missing or you're missing this tab, um, don't panic. The first thing you should do is email d.osu.edu and tell them what's going on. Either your programs are missing um, or the department tab is missing, but you should have programs listed and you should have access to the department because you've used it in previous years. Um, just let them know if you had a, uh, something in there before and now it's missing, um, that they should uh, um, you know, reestablish your account. Uh, so it might be um, for example, if you had a name.number change, that's one of the reasons why people kind of lose their profiles and their, their list of programs. Because they, they might have, um, you know, changed their last name.number. Uh, so that's one reason that these things can go uh, missing. Um, if that's the case, the OD folks are, are pretty good about um, reestablishing and finding your stuff. So I'm gonna, I have a request here about, um, just let me show you real quick what this looks like on my report before I answer your uh, question, Francis, about how to, um, how to do this. Uh, so the annual report, you'll see here that this is um, uh, one that I made a copy of. Um, this event has two copies listed underneath it and you can tell they're copies because they're indented farther. Um, and this is just a separate event that's added um, in support of this 4-H card key programs where I did not teach. So let me first highlight where those are going to show on your report. And again, once you're done generating your report, click on the Save as Word, and then you can open it in Word. Um, uh, and I apologize, the fonts are, have not, they're kind of wonky right now. Um, let's see. So... This is the 4-H Cartoons program. Now, if this 4-H Cartoons program was not showing up on my document at all, it's because one, either I didn't fill in my days um, spent, or I did not have at least one 2019 event associated with the program. So if you look at your program list and there's no events associated with the program, that program will not print on your profile, on your document, all right? So, You'll notice down here that I have, um, it's telling me there's four events, but the only numbers that are here are the ones that were associated with my non-teaching events. The ones up here, you'll see I have dangers of distracted driving. It's only adding up my um, copies of my dangers of distracted driving. 
and you'll see it, it has three times offer. So this copy is of a related event. These two copies are of this uh, original event. So to show you that again, and a parent event just means that this was the original instance of the event in general, uh, best uh, management practice would be to add um, the one that happens uh, chronologically the earliest in the year, add that as the parent event. And this just means I taught at these other two locations and other two times the exact same topic. So at all three of these, I taught the dangers of distracted driving um, at all three of these locations. They just happen to be at different locations and different times. Um, so that's why I made them as related copies. Um, but then if you go into open each of one of these, I would have changed my information. Um, for example, I would have changed uh, the direct contacts um, that are associated with these. Okay. Um, and again, this is uh, the um, event where I uh, did not teach. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this one. And let's see. It said uh, January 7th for that one. I'm going to go ahead and change it to March um, 2019. And I'm going to say uh, different school. And again, this field does not print anywhere. This is just for my personal notes. I'm going to change my numbers down here. And you see that first one changed for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this was a related event. Okay. And I'm going to click on submit. So now I have a copy of this under here. And if I want to see it, I just click on my expand arrows. Okay. So now you'll see on my document. that we had four events listed before down here. Now it should say five. And it's added those other people. Okay. Debbie, Sarah had a question about her publications. Uh, she said all of her publications appear on her annual report, not just the current year. So not just 2019s when she spits out the annual report for 2019. Yes. Um, Sarah, I might have to look at yours um, separately. If you could send me a copy of your document. Um, I don't know if I saw your original question, um, but if you could send me a copy of your document, then I can help troubleshoot you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, if that's okay. Um, but I would think that it's something to do with the dates, either the date of your annual report. Um, maybe you don't have 2019 selected and you don't realize that you don't have 2019 selected. Um, or uh, there might be a date that we need to fix in the record, or it might be in the supporting data field. So I might have to troubleshoot you, uh, troubleshoot those problems on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, so yeah, sorry if I missed that, Sarah. Uh, let's see. Um, Laura, I don't have a copy of that. Um, there is a Excel tracking spreadsheet, but personally, I think best practice is to come in here like as soon as possible after the event has finished instead of waiting until January 12th um, and come into this um, reporting system because the more you use um, Vita, the easier it will be for you to use. Um, I think um, it's a fairly uh, user friendly system um, as far as entering data. Sometimes it can be a little frustrating um, as to, hey, what happened? I, I know I put this in here. What, what have I done wrong? Um, so it can be a little bit touchy at times, but in general, it's just filling out a bunch of fields and making sure that you have those fields filled in correctly. 
um, and generating the report as you go along, as you add things. Just keep an eye on that report. Just keep generating it and clicking on this refresh button and, and, and updating it as you go along. Um, that way you're not entering a ton of data and then discovering at the very end something has happened. Something is not printing on here properly. Yes, Lydia is saying that area leaders can share that um, Excel file with you. But again, I think best management practice is to come in here and just add it to the system directly instead of um, adding it to Excel file, and then you just have to come in here and add it in there. So, any other questions that I may have missed that you submitted earlier? Like I said, I think during the presentation, I tried to address all of the questions that you had submitted. Um, if I see something afterward that I didn't get to, I will um, pop you a, a, like an individual email. Debbie, one last question. Francis is asking again about the curriculum narrative. You only do that if? Yes, we only do that if uh, you have done something um, in, uh, to develop a curriculum during that reporting year. Um, and a curriculum would be, it's not just um, a set of PowerPoint slides. It's, uh, and it, it's a program, like you've developed a curriculum uh, to deliver in your county or to deliver statewide. Um, you're developing a new curriculum or you're editing an existing curriculum. Um, so your camp counselor training, um, did you have an evaluation associated with that, with your program objectives? Uh, so you might do something like that. You are overhauling that camp counselor training program, but if it's you're just kind of like updating something that's already existing, then I probably wouldn't put that in there. But again, if you're not a faculty member, there's different requirements for AMP than there are for faculty. The best place to start that conversation is with your supervisor and ask them what they're expecting to see. And Again, if you're brand new to the system, you're not going to have anything in that field, and that's okay. When you have an external partnership, will that information copy over in each event? I believe it should, um, and it would print on that um, extension and performance review document. And again, that's probably um, the best place to describe that partnership. Um, Roseanne would be in the um, extension program itself where you have that collaboration description. Um, so you can describe all of the, the um, partnerships that have been developed during the year. You can also put that information as more narrative form in your activities products field. And again, that activities products field has a little bug in it right now. By the end of the week, they should have that printing on your documents. So if you print out your document and you noticed it says none next to um, the uh, activities products field, they're working on that bug right now. All right, if there's no other questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Danae, you can stop the recording and just hang out here for another minute or so. And thank everybody for coming.